when facing larger opponents, one of the techniques I like to rely on is low singles. So I'm trying to get Jake to chase me a little bit, but he actually beats me to the punch. I counter with a zesty little limp leg to start out the round. He then begins pressuring into me, so all that's left to do is a double wrist snap into that low single leg. And we enter into our first big sequence of the round. I then have to run the pipe to off balance him so I can cut across for my double, absolutely asserting myself with the first takedown of the round. This is what I was attempting to do at the beginning of the sequence. Let's see it one more time. Low single, moves his knee inside. I sit through for the knee blender, but he circles that leg away. So I cut across in front for a double, he blocks my inside arm. I then run the pipe to off balance him so I can cut across for my double. We lock hands here in the middle. Jake is giving me a lot to respond to, faking, fainting. He moves really well, especially for a guy of his size. My stance is so staggered that my legs are very far apart, meaning the only real leg attack I'm giving him is a single leg, which I'm not really concerned with as I'm very confident in my single leg defense, and Jake is actually gonna make me pay for this. He runs the pipe, attempting to double around back, then lifts my leg up as I feather my foot outside and hits a nasty horizontal trip, sitting me right down in my butt and collecting the takedown. Let's see it again. Beautiful entry, getting both hands connected. As he doubles across, I block his double. He commits to the head inside single leg. I'm feathering my foot inside and outside, trying to make it as difficult for him to finish as possible. Now, I'm about as comfortable on one leg as I am on two, so I'm really not worried at all here. But Jake does an excellent job of controlling me at both ends, the high end at my head and the low end at my feet. And if you didn't catch it the first time, he catches a knee straight to the chin for his first takedown. But the mountain man, he eats that for breakfast. Back in the middle, I just reach up to see what he's going to do. I see that he reaches back. So now that I know that, I'm going to walk in, reach again to get him to reach back and go in for a double. I try to attempt a peek out for a reattack, and Jake reattacks off of my reattack. I off balance him with an Uchimata. He can feel we're about to go into another long, lengthy finishing sequence, so he chooses to abandon the position entirely. Using that slap bump again to buy me an extra one or two seconds of recovery time before we get into it again. I've probably gotten used to over-relying on the limp leg against Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners, so when I go up against a wrestler, what I should have been doing is prioritizing my down blocks and sprawls, the first two layers of defense, as opposed to relying solely on limp legs. I fake at the legs and attempt to snap him down, and he actually almost hits me with a duck. He's doing a really good job baiting me with posts, so look at this. He's going to post on my head, and when I go to peel it off, he's going to peel my wrist off of his and use that as a reattack. Yup, he goes to peel my wrist and gain two-on-one wrist control. But again, I'm not too worried about anyone being in on a single leg as I'm very comfortable limp legging out. I'm thinking enough with the leg attacks, let's be real men and go upper body. My goal is to get double underhooks. I actually teach you this underhook setup in this video here. The two main counters I'm looking for once he has double overhooks are the headlock and the inside trip. Jake's about to show me I'm being a little short-sighted here as he hits me with a third option. That's the double overhook throw. But when he doesn't get it, that allows me to cinch my underhooks deeper, connecting my hands, cutting an angle to the side body lock, popping my hips in, and throwing for the takedown. Even with a 30 pound weight advantage, if you know how to throw correctly by popping your hips in, you can get anybody within about 50 to 75 pounds of you off the ground. And this is one of the best takedowns in jiu-jitsu because you land with the guard passed, connected chest to chest. It can be relatively easy to scramble out of single legs in jiu-jitsu, so I really like the finishing mechanics of body locks. This is beautiful, this chaining sequence here. He hits a metskarami and scrambles to the back, doing a knee pinch finish to the takedown. This is actually the counter that Kyle Dake got caught in in the last Olympic cycle. As he goes in for a body lock and he steps up with his outside leg, his opponent wraps an underhook on the posting leg, elevating, off-balancing, and finishing. So again, here, I'm in inside position, and as I step up, he underhooks the far knee, lifts, unravels my grip, and then scrambles to the back, connecting his hands and finishing with a nice little knee pinch variation. Curse you in your suave ways, mountain man. What I try to do here is what's called a misdirection low single. Since I just failed with a single leg on the left side, I attempt to do a misdirection low single here. So you faint to one side, and as they pull their leg back, you cut back to the other side. But Jake makes a good read and sprawls both legs back simultaneously. Jake goes in for a double, a little too far from the outside, so we're kind of trading bad shots here in the middle. He uses a knee slicer to free his grip and does a great underhook shuck by to the single leg, but two quick little limp legs gets me out of the position. Right there, you see my hand reach up. I'm thinking about hitting that slap bump, but for this one time in the round, I choose not to be a coward and keep my hands at bay and get right back into the sequence. You're starting to see a theme occur in Jake's style. Every time I peel his wrist, he drags off of my own wrist to his own shot. But again, 
that old reliable limp leg saves the day. I absolutely love these kinds of setups. So right after an opponent's attack, when you both kind of have this unspoken soft walk back to the middle, that's a perfect time to attack. So I just reach up at the head, knowing he will reach back like he has many times before in the round. And when he does, I go in for a double. Most coaches would teach you not to finish a double leg head side. Here we see it at the national tournament on the D1 level. McGee actually uses that same low single misdirection setup that I just showed you, but uses it to transition into a double. Here's Nicky Ryan hitting a standing double leg against Dante Leone, finishing head side in BJJ. It's a totally appropriate option, whether in wrestling or jujitsu or in MMA. Feeling the fatigue of the day, I start going in for my super low calorie takedowns, which are two on one Russian ties. In this scenario specifically, I go in for a key lock, which I actually teach you in this video here. As he reaches up, I baseball back grip off of the wrist, move my inside arm up to the armpit. You can't see it, but I've connected my hand on top of my inside wrist. And what I'm waiting for is for him to pressure back into me. Waiting for just the smallest amount of pressure back. So as soon as he posts that hand down on the mat, I just had to shuck him by because his weight was already going so far forward. In true staller fashion, I look back at the cameraman and ask how much time is left on the clock. He tells me 20 seconds, and I'm just trying to hold on here so I can say I had the last takedown of the round. He gives the limp leg a little recognition with a frustrating head shake. I down block one of his shots. He's picking up the pace, attempts a foot sweep. I try to shuck him by, but he chains into a double and finishes head side for the last takedown of the round. Outside of the artificial context of competition, pulling guard is not a safe option in neither MMA or a self-defense scenario. Having access to superior rustling allows you to safely and reliably take your opponent to the ground. And if your opponent has better jujitsu, you can then choose to stay on your feet, completely eliminating your opponent's jujitsu. Now's the time for me to serve you with two empowering options moving forward. There are two low risk, high reward takedowns which anyone of any age, mobility, or skill level can do in my zero cost takedown mini course linked in the comments and description below. If you are truly committed to adding takedowns to your game, the kind which will have your training partners asking you how in the world you just did that, and want all of your training modules in one place, saving you an enormous amount of time, money, energy, and effort, then my course, the Effective Takedown System, is for you. Join the hundreds of BJJ practitioners who are going from absolute beginner all the way to advanced on the feet for jujitsu. The Effective Takedown System is a lifetime of takedown training for less than a couple months of jujitsu membership fees. If you want to learn more about the Effective Takedown System, just click the video in the top left corner where you'll also see the public's response to the course in the comment section of that video. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and as always, stay scrappy.